I mean, I think it's a, a very relevant organization. I think one of the things you hear a lot about today, um, and today's youth specifically, is that there are so many distractions in life. You have a cell phone, a Blackberry, an iPhone, a computer, an iPod, and you can be so disjuncted from the world. And I think everyone sometimes tends to forget that the world goes around because people make the world go around. And I think masonry is one of those beautiful things that for that time, for that hour, that hour and a half, that two hours on that Wednesday night or that Saturday night that everyone is in that lodge room and everyone's kind of working toward a better purpose and that's a, a, a humankind purpose. Um, and I, I think all of you know, the, the rings and the buzzes of a cell phone and all that kind of stuff kind of goes away. Um, I think that with the steady decline of just morals in general in society, um, I think that organizations that kind of try to teach brotherly love and uh, I, I get away from the me type of mentality. I think that those are positive organizations and I've always tried to seek ways to serve my community. I, I, I don't think there's enough emphasis on people having values, on, on wanting to do their best, on wanting to do the right thing, on wanting to treat others right. And uh, masonry builds on that, not from the aspect of trying to get other people to do it, but trying to get each of us to do the best that we can with ourselves, and not to be as judgmental on other people. It's, it's a way to make good men better. My father's a mason. I just didn't get in right away. In fact, I'm the last one in my family to have gotten the message, and I did it on my own, and so did my brother. So my father really had no influence on us, although we have five or six generations of our family on both my father's side and my mother's side going back to some grandmasters. And uh, of course, as far as the United States, it plays a, a major role because most of the founding fathers were, were Masons, and you can see the lessons entwined in the different documents that they wrote and the letters that they wrote back and forth to each other and the decisions that they made that framed our country. More and more young people in the Blue Lodges are coming in. A lot of young people that I see um, former military business people are finding in us what we have said all along that we are, which is the opportunity to take good men and make them better. Um, my first sergeant in my first unit was a Freemason, and he, I noticed that he had a lot of community service activities going on. I just really wanted to be a part of that. I was in Baghdad when I had this conversation with him, and he was just an outstanding guy and always there for the troops going the extra mile, so. And so I would say more relevant today than we might have been in years past. But part of that too is I've seen masonry change a lot. Uh, and we used to not be willing to say who we are and what we did. We had these rules about you have to ask me first and stuff. That might have been good in decades previous, um, but it is not what we need today in order to share the good works that happen in masonry. Since being a Freemason, as an emergency department physician, there have been many times when either the patient or the family of a patient would see my Blue Lodge ring and say, look dad, he's a Mason, as they knew that there was a brother by their bedside taking care of them. Give me Freemasonry for dummies. Give me the 101 <laughs> on it. Why is this group fascinating? They are fascinating because we live in a world where different cultures are killing each other over whose version of God is accurate. And here you have an organization, a global organization, that is spiritual and yet will bring Muslims, Jews, Christians, and even just people who are confused about the religion, bring them together and say, look, we all agree that there's some good big thing out there, but we're not going to put a label on it. Let's worship together. Masonry is really without equal on, in terms of a, a belief system, which is that no one can be told what to believe, especially when it comes to the very personal nature of belief in a higher power. One of the reasons that I'm very comfortable being a Mason and contribute in my own way financially is because we do good things. And we do them for a lot of people who are not Masons, but who are Americans. And that makes me very happy to be part of it. So I think that's how to, I think Freemasonry today is more relevant uh, than some other periods of time because, you know, whereas, you know, in the whole golden age of fraternalism when, you know, you had friends who were Masons so you joined, now it's people looking for something else to, to fill a different part of their life. My name is Jason Orm. I'm an electrician. I'm a sergeant in the Army National Guard. 
Uh, my name is Nicholas Sampogna and I am a Freemason. My name is Richard Draper and I'm a Scottish Rite Mason. I am Mike Enzi, United States Senator from Wyoming and I am a Scottish Rite Freemason. I am Brad Paisley and I am a Scottish Rite Mason. My name is Tom Wilkerson. I'm a Scottish Rite Mason, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the U.S. Naval Institute.